Hi everyone and welcome to Crunchy News at Noon on this Wednesday. I'm Laura Papetti. It's good to see you taking a live look outside as everyone wants to know what the weather will be like today. Pretty great and kind of cloudy out there right now as we overlook downtown Coeur d'Alene. Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu, he's inside with me at the Creme 2 Weather Center. And Jeremy, it's been a little bit of wet, a little bit of fog. It's kind of a blah day. Oh, uh, yeah, it's the one official of those, term. It, blah day, I think, is actually an official term, Laura. I, I personally would use it, but yeah, we've started to see a little bit of sunshine if you cross state line, but over in Coeur d'Alene, it's still a little bit cloudy. It's still a little bit socked in at times, but temperatures are on the rise. We are already in the low 40s and likely going to stay close to there. The other bit of good news, we've gotten rid of a lot of that low hanging stratus or fog early on this morning. And by this afternoon, we're talking much clearer conditions across the region. It's looking pretty good. 38 in Coeur d'Alene with clouds, 36 in Sandpoint. We're starting to see a little bit of sun here in Spokane. I saw a little earlier, I actually had to put my sunglasses on when I was outside. I went, what are these things? Forgot what they were. They, they work well, though, in case you were wondering. We're going to continue to hang on to some of those stronger wind gusts as we move through the day, up near 30 miles per hour. So expect that to continue as we start to clear things out a little more widespread. Notice some of those showers kind of popping up in northeastern Washington and north Idaho. A little bit of orographic lift from our westerly flow is squeezing out the remnant moisture in our atmosphere. So if you're in high elevations, you don't really get to see sun today or tomorrow for that matter. But here's what you get. Temps. Topping out right around 42, so we're going to gain about another degree. And then this afternoon, things are actually going to start cooling down once we get that westerly flow established. All right, my friend, thank you. We do have some promising news today. In the efforts to contain the COVID-19 Omicron variant, Pfizer is saying a new study shows its booster is highly effective against the variant. And as CBS's Laura Podesta shows us, the news comes as people are looking to get their booster. Concern over the Omicron variant is driving Americans to get vaccinated against COVID-19. 12.5 million people got a shot in the past week, the most since May. We also have a lot of vacations planned, going to Italy, going to Hawaii. So it's like, why not? Extra layer of protection. And breaking this morning, Pfizer says two doses of its existing COVID vaccine may protect against the new strain, but three doses neutralize the Omicron variant in an initial laboratory study. It appears that with the cases that are seen, we are not seeing a very severe profile of disease. In fact, it might be, and I underscore might, be less severe. Health officials say Americans should be more concerned with the Delta variant right now. Cases are rising in 33 states. All of our hospitals are critically strained right now. More than 95% of Wisconsin's ICU beds are in use. Freydert Hospital President Eric Conley says most patients have one thing in common. Unfortunately, the vast majority of our COVID-19 admissions are patients that are unvaccinated and could have prevented their need for care if they had taken action earlier during this pandemic. Pfizer says it's working on an Omicron specific vaccine and hopes to have it available by March. Laura Podesta, CBS News. And Pfizer CEO did say they'll know in a few weeks if a modified vaccine is actually indeed necessary, but they do hope they can stick with the current shot. So if you received your first vaccine doses back in the spring, you do qualify to get a booster. To find a booster shot appointment near you, you can use the Washington Department of Health's vaccine locator and search by your zip code. So find something close by. For more information on booking an appointment, text the word booster to our text line. The word booster to 509-448-2000. And the push for boosters comes as Pfizer and Merck's COVID-19 treatment pills could soon be receiving emergency use authorization. Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team is looking into whether children could be eligible to take that medication. Pfizer and Merck have developed pills to help reduce the risk of hospitalization and death from COVID-19. Both drug makers have applied for emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration in the coming weeks. Verify viewer Sandra wants to know, can Merck or Pfizer's COVID-19 treatment pills be given to children? So Sandra, let's verify. Our sources are Pfizer, Merck, studies on both drugs efficacy, Cedar sinai Medical Center, and the FDA. Pfizer and Merck studied their COVID-19 pills in trials, similar to how the vaccines were developed. A study of Merck's pill shows it reduced the risk of hospitalization or death by 30% among high-risk unvaccinated volunteers 
while a separate study of Pfizer's pill reduced the risk by 89%. Both companies only studied the efficacy in people over the age of 18. Therefore, the FDA can only consider authorizing the pills in adults. So it's false that Merck or Pfizer's COVID-19 pills can be given to children, at least for now. Cedar sinai Medical Center explains researchers often start with adults and then work backwards to study the drugs on children because, quote, trials for children require special ethical and clinical considerations and have to meet a higher standard before they can start recruiting participants, unquote. Pfizer tells Verify it hasn't yet determined a timeline to begin studying its pill in children. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. All right, a 15-year-old girl who was missing from Lewiston has been found in Spokane Valley, a convicted sex offender. Suspected in her disappearance has also been arrested. A person called 911 after seeing the man's car. Police had shared details of the vehicle as part of an Amber, uh, Amber Alert. Authorities say when they approached the suspect, Jonathan Wayne Bowles, he started running but was later arrested. Bowles is currently in Spokane County Jail. The girl is in safe, protective custody. And the iconic Davenport hotels are being sold. Local owners Walt and Karen Worthy signed a deal with KSL Capital Partners. The company owns some of the top hotels around the world. Back in 2002, many of you may remember, the Worthys bought the historic Davenport and reopened it. The local landmark had been closed since 1985 and was nearly torn down. The collection of hotels includes the Davenport, Davenport Tower, Lusso Grand, and the Centennial. The Davenport Historic started 107 years ago. We have a great history, and as I, I, I've said this already, but this is just a new chapter. Walt, you know, Louis Davenport had a lot of our story. Walt and Karen had a few chapters in there, and, and you know, we're going to turn the page and we're going to start, um, you know, this this next phase and we're looking forward to it. So we're told hotel staff members are being told their jobs are secure. As for the worthies, they plan to retire but still stay involved in the Spokane community. All right, talking about downtown. Well, it's a frustrating feeling for a lot of drivers in the downtown Spokane area. Ongoing issues with the parking app may leave you digging for change or risking getting a ticket just to park your car. When CREM2 learned of the problem, we took your concerns to the city. Nicole Hernandez explains what they're now telling drivers to do. That's right. So for a lot of people who either work in or are visiting downtown, parking here on the street and paying here at the meters is often the easiest and cheapest way to find parking downtown. But some people right now are having issues at paying for that parking. So we had viewers actually telling us that they're specifically having trouble with the Passport Parking app. It's a popular option to pay for parking downtown, especially if you don't carry change. Shannon Orlando parks on the street daily near the Spokane County Courthouse. She says the last few months she and her coworkers have noticed the city's passport parking app won't take her payment. When you try to uh, put in your information or when you try to pay, it just goes in an endless loop circle. You never get to pay. City spokesperson Brian Coddington confirmed they are aware of issues people have had paying through the app. The city told us it is working on a new program that would allow people to use several different apps to pay for parking, giving drivers more options. So in the meantime, what options do you have? Well, you do still have to pay for parking. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting a ticket. But a lot of the uh, meters here do have card readers, so you can just use a credit card to pay for that parking. Some of them don't, though. So if you are coming downtown, you plan on parking on the street, make sure you bring some extra change just in case. In Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, thank you, Nicole. It is 12.09 right now. A series of earthquakes struck off the Oregon coast on Tuesday afternoon. The largest, largest one registered in at 5.8, which hit about 4.45 yesterday. None of them were felt on land. However, this is one of the most seismically active faults near North America, and we're told by the authorities there is no cause for concern. Well, the fleece that many of us wear on chilly days may be causing more pollution. Some new research showing the clothing can break down into plastic parts. And so they did some studying in Oregon to take a look at microplastics, which then end up in the waterways. A group called Environment Oregon recently tested 30 rivers and lakes all across Oregon for those microplastics. All right. It's a big day for Creme Cares and you can be part of it. 
help make a difference this holiday season through the tree of sharing. Coming up next, the easy way to donate today and you don't even need to get out of your car. It's perfect, more to come.